Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be talking about fragrance do's and don'ts. All right, mainly more of the don'ts. So if you know people that do any of these things, send them this video. Or if you do any of these things, hopefully this is helpful to you. So number one is don't spray a fragrance on your wrist, rub it in, and then rub it behind your ears. All right, so I have seen a lot of people do this because their parents have done it, so it's something that they've observed. Even for myself, I remember watching my dad apply his colognes that way, my uncles did it that way. But a reason you should stay away from that is number one, it can potentially take off the top notes of your fragrance so it's not gonna smell the way it's supposed to. And number two, it can affect longevity and nobody wants to have a fragrance be even poorer in performance if it's already weak. You know what I mean? You want it to last a good amount of time. And an analogy that I've used time and time again is the spray paint analogy. So let's say you're spray painting a mural. Right when you're done, do you go in with your hands and rub it in to make sure it completely dries or do you let it sit, right? Another analogy is the setting spray. So after you apply your makeup and you put your setting spray, do you really rub in your setting spray all over your face to make sure it dries? Of course you don't because it's gonna fuck up your makeup. So I think a lot of people, and this kind of bleeds into the second don't, is a lot of people apply their fragrance super close to their wrist and you see how it's kind of dripping down like that. So of course this makes you want to dry off your wrist and rub it in. You know what I'm saying? But another flaw of doing this is if you're also testing a fragrance, you might just smell alcohol. There's been a lot of people in my DMs that have told me that, oh, I went to Sephora and I don't get the hype about black opium. It just smells like nail polish remover. But when I tell them, did you spray your wrist or the test strip super close and then put it to your nose immediately? And they're like, yeah, I thought that's how you test it. So in that regard, what you do is grab the fragrance, have your test strip or your wrist kind of, and then kind of let it mist. So it hits it like that. And then by the time it gets to your nose, you get the way that the fragrance is actually supposed to smell instead of that alcohol scent. So please just try to do that in the future and then you'll notice a big change in the fragrances and you'll be like, okay, yeah, now I know what people are talking about. Now I know which one I wanna get because spraying it super close and then having it drip and then rubbing it down, it's just the recipe for like, you know, like forming like bad habits with it and then not getting the right sort of smell and nobody wants that, you know what I mean? So avoid rubbing in the fragrance and then avoid spraying it so close when you're testing. The other thing, the third thing I would avoid is please don't wear your sweet fragrances in the high heat, all right? I know a lot of people love their one millions. They love Side Effect by Anisio, but if you're wearing it in a Spice Bomb Extreme, if you're wearing it when it's hot outside, the sun and the heat already naturally turn things a bit sweeter, right? So if you have something that's already sweet and then it's getting even sweeter, it can become cloying, it can become nauseating, it can become overly sweet. And a core memory that I have back in high school was having PE fourth period, literally right before lunch. So it's noon time and in the girls locker room, everybody's sweaty but there were girls that would apply pink sugar, which is this very sweet vanilla caramel sort of strawberry scent. And it would mix with their body odor and it just smelled so bad. It was sickeningly sweet. So when it's hot outside, please try to grab fresh and clean fragrances. I know that they might be a bit more tart or sour and citrusy, but like I said in the beginning, the heat turns it just the right amount of sweet. So think of a refreshing glass of lemonade. When it's hot outside and that lemonade is hitting because it has just the right amount of sugar and it still has that tartness, it's something that's refreshing and it's something that you crave. So that is what fresh and clean fragrances do when it's hot outside. So when it's hot, fresh and clean. When it's cold, go for the sweet fragrances because they can cut through the cold. And to kind of just go into that a little bit more 
when you wear sweet scents or you know what let me take it back for a little bit wearing fresh and clean fragrances during the fall and winter isn't a bad thing for the most part you can wear fresh fragrances year round but the only downside of wearing your fresh and clean scent during fall and winter gloomy cold weather is that the performance is going to suck they do not survive in the cold think of flowers right do roses bloom in the snow they don't if you take a rose and you literally keep it in the snow that shit is gonna wilt so fast it's gonna die so fast it's not going to survive so that's when you whip out the the uh the sweet spicy sort of fragrances because they are strong enough to cut through the cold and to last during that type of weather and that type of environment so that is where those shine best of course if you want to wear a sweet scent during the summer do it during summer nights when the sun is down and you know if you're going clubbing you're going to parties at nighttime that's when those shine really really nicely another thing i would avoid doing is wearing your sweet powerhouse scents when you're going on dinner dates and i've made a specific video about fragrances to not wear during dinner dates and then ones to like that you that are better suited for dinner dates because i know that sweet scents are something that a lot of people are very drawn to but like yesterday for example i was eating some sushi and this girl walked in with just flower bomb blasting and it's like i don't want to smell that while i'm eating my tuna and my salmon you know so it's something that like you don't want to wear a fragrance that's going to be competing with the aroma of the food you know what i'm saying because it can just it can be very off-putting in fact like i stopped eating just because i kind of got me nauseous i'm not gonna lie so when you are going on these dates or if you are just like you know going out to eat with some people and it was even hot outside too so that was just a mixture of all things bad a really sweet fragrance it's hot outside and you know we're eating a meal like you know a meal like that's fish and it's just i i could not get another bite after she sat behind me all right so let me just recollect what i was thinking yeah yeah sweet fragrances during dinner time like very strong ones that are going to push across the table be very careful about that all right like uh, yeah fresh fragrances do well but if you do want your sweet scent then maybe apply just the right amount so that you know like if you want to enjoy the smell of it you can but the whole restaurant isn't going to be like what the fuck another moment i had is i was eating like ramen or something like that and this dude across the room was rocking one million by paco raban and i literally saw people just like massaging their temples and they're like what the fuck and it was just kind of a crowded environment so please do your best to be considerate of other people and not wear these strong clubbing partying fragrances especially when you're eating food because it's not it's not as attractive as you think all right and also if that's what you like cool but just make sure you do the right amount so it's not pissing everybody else off like you can enjoy it yourself but don't do it at the expense of everybody else getting upset and getting nauseous you know what i'm saying so that's one thing i would avoid now here is a do of fragrances i will apply my scent of the day oh man i kind of have to sneeze this heat wave has been getting me guys so if i sneeze randomly in this video oh man all right so this is how i apply a fragrance for the perfect scent bubble you might have seen me do it in my videos but i do one behind each ear the back of my neck and then the backs of my shoulder blades so i typically do the five that's how i test my fragrances for longevity of course if it's a weaker performing fragrance i can spray more of it if it's a strong scent then i spray less of it and there's just also other factors that come into play of okay i'm gonna be at the beach all day i can absolutely do over 10 sprays of afternoon swim because i'm not going to be indoors choking anybody out i'm just going to be outside in the water and it's not going to be pissing people off they'll notice it but it's not going to be like so strong where they can't escape it you know what i'm saying so it's still a good amount so with things like you know side effect by anisio if you are going to be in a crowded room and you're doing five sprays of this 
that's a recipe for pissing everybody else off in the room because it's a very loud sort of scent, especially if you're going to work and nobody can escape it. Now, the reason why you saw me apply it in the spots that I did one behind each ear is because this is a pulse point and it helps radiate the fragrance even further. I did it behind my neck for my scent trail and then also behind my shoulder blades for my scent trail as well. Before I would apply it here, but sometimes I would go a bit more nose blind to my fragrances. So I wanted to avoid that by still being able to smell it, but not having it all under my nose. You know what I'm saying? So this has been literally the perfect spraying technique for me. I have not changed it ever since I found out that I've just like, I've been enjoying it and other people around me are like, oh, you smell good. I get a lot of compliments off the way, well, off my fragrances, but that is the routine that I do all the time. And of course, less or more depending on the fragrance that I am wearing. Now, a don't for me is applying in this neck area. I know a lot of guys in particular like to spray it on their Adam's apple, but first of all, the neck and then even the chest ladies, like the cleavage area is very sensitive. So if you're applying alcohol on it, you might not see it immediately, but it can also wrinkle your skin over time because it's, it's very sensitive here. You know what I'm saying? So just, I would just avoid this whole area altogether, which is why you saw me do it behind each ear and the back of the neck. Some people love to put it in their hair and I'm not gonna say you should or you shouldn't. It just depends on you know how strong your hair is, if it will kind of dry out sooner or if it doesn't really dry out that much. I will say hair is a very good scent carrier. So like by all means, do it if you please. Like my girlfriend does that and it lasts forever on her, all right? Now, another thing that I would, I'm trying to think, I, th those were the main things that I would avoid doing and that I would do, oh shoot, okay. I just, my bad. Um, but let me just try to think if there's anything else that I might be missing. Okay, well, with work fragrances, kind of similar, I've made a separate video on this as well, but with work fragrances, also remember to kind of like the dinner date, be tasteful with it, with the amount that you're doing and the kind of scent you're wearing. For example, Missing Person by Fleur, where is it? This is, it's not my favorite actual scent, but the, the way that this performs is fantastic for a work environment because it's something that's intimate that the person next to you won't really be able to smell, but you yourself can smell this on you all day because it has pretty good longevity. So when you're working, remember that you're not there to fish for compliments. I've had some followers tell me that um, they were wearing things like Carlisle and they would get you know, mad dogged with it. And they're like, well, I don't care because I'm gonna wear what I want. And they're just jealous that I have a really expensive fragrance. And I'm telling you right now, nobody's jealous of your, your scent that you're wearing. You know what I mean? For the most part, they probably don't give a fuck about perfume or cologne, but you wearing a scent that is very strong and your coworkers cannot escape from because you're probably on like the 99th floor in your high riser is very inconsiderate and rude. So know when and where to apply certain fragrances. Like I said, the loud partying scents, wear it at nighttime, fall, winter, in tasteful amounts if you are going to work. Um, but for the most part, during work environments, I highly recommend fresh and clean fragrances. If you had to, that's what I do. But it's a bit, it's a hit or miss because there are allergies as well. And you have to kind of make sure that, you know, you don't want your coworker over there just losing it because you know they're swelling up and stuff like that or or whatever right so please be cautious with that in work environments and also if you are the this here's how i'll round up round off this video is if you're somebody with sensitive skin i've made a video for this as well so you can look into the specifics of it but apply your fragrance on your clothes all right my sister has sensitive skin and she'll literally just kind of put it on like the back of her shirt or her dress and then like kind of like the front area. So instead of behind each ear, just kind of boom, boom, the backs of the shoulders and then on your hair or like the middle of your back if you want to. Um, so yeah, just spray it on your clothes because like hair, clothes are a great scent carrier and they last longer than they do on skin. So 
I know this video was a bit longer, but thank you so much for watching. If, you know, if this helped you, I'm really glad. Um, if this helps somebody else that you know, I'm happy with that as well. But there are more, I just can't really think of it right now. But if you do think of some, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye.